Netflix's adaptation of Neil Gaiman's seminal graphic novel, Sandman, really seems to be dividing fans and uh, first-time viewers who are new to the property. If we're going to look at uh, whether or not the show is actually worth watching, first we need, <laughs> we need to look at the big gay elephant in the room. And if anyone watched my previous video on this, uh, you will see that's the sort of the, the main topic of that video. It's certainly something that uh, yeah, is really um, causing a lot of um, discussion on the internet uh, about that. And on that video, which was actually one of my most popular videos ever, uh, I got three kinds of comments uh, from that video. The first one was uh, from people who agreed. And uh, they said uh, the whole thing ripped them out of the story. And, but, you know, overall, the show was okay. It was decent and worth watching. Then there were people who said, yes, it ripped them out of the story and it was too woke for them. And, you know, they only got a few episodes in and bounced. And then there were uh, those who said, I'm a crying homophobe <laughs> ranting into a camera, which, as you all know, if you know me, uh, yeah, that sounds a lot like me. Uh, look, the accusations of homophobia are especially bizarre, considering I, you know, actually praised uh, a gay, uh, famous gay characters from Modern Family, Cam and Mitch. But uh, look, I think most people who left the comment like that probably didn't even watch the video. They just uh, saw the title or heard me say something and just uh, pounced into the comments. But uh, one commenter even even took the line of attack that I uh, predicted, which is uh, this one here, uh, Solve for X, said, Comic Skater once again here to remind you that a fantasy, dreamwalking, hell-visiting, eternal monster, people are totally fine, but a disproportionate number of gay people and black people is just, you know, it takes them out of the story. Uh, yes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I went over in the video why this line of thinking is uh, wrongheaded. In fact, it's sort of the exact opposite of how you should be looking at it. It's a well-known uh, part of storytelling, especially in fantasy. Uh, well, any fiction, really. It's called suspension of disbelief. Here's a very quick Google search on it. What does it mean? Suspension of disbelief, also called the willing suspension of disbelief. This is another way of saying it, is the willingness of a reader to ignore critical thinking in order to enjoy a story. All fiction needs a suspension of disbelief because by definition, the stories aren't real. You would think this would be easy to understand. Uh, I don't know. I mean, I think it's because of the specific criticisms that I levied that people uh, you know, went down a certain track uh but the reality is look sandman the sandman is set in it's supposed to be set in our world in our world however these fantastical elements are hidden from us common people so for viewers to believe uh, in that and accept that world and get drawn into the story and enjoy it as a story they have to accept that level of fantasy other, if that doesn't happen, you're just constantly reminded that, no, in fact, you're watching a TV show. TV shows are created by showrunners and writers and all sorts of things, as opposed to being just pulled into a world and enjoying the characters and the story and everything for what it is. Now, I get it. Gay representation is a hot button topic. Emotions are flared. Defenses are up. But, uh, you know... The reason why it's an issue is not because people have this massive problem with gay people on television. It's 2022. Almost all television shows will now have, you know, at least one uh, gay character in it. It's it's because the way uh, homosexuality is presented in Sandman, the people have a reaction to it. It doesn't. The way it's presented in the show does not in any way reflect the world that uh, any of us are familiar with the world that the show should be representing uh and it could be literally anything it could be anything that's out of place it doesn't have to be a gay people it could be imagine every second character in a show just inexplicably has blue hair but it's supposed to be the world we know but every second or third character has blue hair or uh speaks with a heavy thick german accent when they're speaking english can you can you honestly tell me that if that were the case, you wouldn't be going, huh? 
what's that about why is that in the story um and the weird the weird, especially the weird thing is that the sandman book the graphic novel it's based on it was already really progressive especially for the time it was written in the late 80s and early 90s when it comes to you know including uh gay characters androgynous characters and stuff like that and you know i'm thinking maybe they thought well we were like the the really progressive story back in the day when you know almost no one was doing that now everyone is doing that i guess we need to turn the heat up to 11 <laughs> maybe that was the thinking on it i don't know but uh what's the actual verdict of the show i got a great comment here from a friend of mine called antoine and he sums it up really well he says so after watching sandman here are some of the positives and negatives i took from the show the only healthy relationships portrayed were between same-sex partners or inter interracial couplings all the male characters portrayed as good were either gay or asexual. This is a thing that is starting to become a thing as well. I think it used to be called the guy brush uh, effect, something based on an old uh, pirate game. Uh, but uh, it's it's a certain, it's a thing that we're seeing more and more often. They want to include representations of. Uh, minority characters uh, of all kinds of stripes but they don't want to because they're supposed to be representative they don't want to actually make them interesting they don't want to make them dark or uh uh you know well do things in there that, that could shine a, a negative light on the group that they're trying to represent it's not 100 percent of the time but it definitely seems to be a trend that we are noticing of late uh, all the black female characters are soulful saints without any negative character traits uh, with wisdom to confer upon all of us. There was a moment at the end of the season where a woman just comes who I think for the first time ever meeting dream, this all powerful anthropomorphic representation of the dream world itself. She just walks straight up to him and calls him an idiot to his face. And he just stands there like a stunned mullet. It was bizarre. <laughs> Uh, like this guy, like he uses his hand to just, you know, dissolve people. It was, uh, and he just like stood there. I was like, yeah, yeah, I guess I'm an idiot. I don't know. Um, he's Antoine continues. The proponents of gay subtext seems to be forced as they didn't offer much to the plot. The white male characters, on the other hand, were the most complex and exciting because they were allowed to have flaws. I couldn't agree with this more. I think stand out, um, Characters in the show, Dream, obviously, the Corinthian. Uh, the Corinthian was fantastic. Uh, the immortal dabbled in. So there's the character in there called uh, who's who's an immortal who just you know shows through time. You know he was a really interesting character. Sadly, only for one episode. Uh, he dabbled in the slave trade. The Corinthian was not altogether wrong about the endless. For anyone who hasn't watched the show, the endless are these yeah these anthropomorphic representations of things like despair and desire and dreams and death and yeah they sort of play with hum humanity like uh you know one might build an ant farm and the corinthian was created by them uh he resented that uh their sort of faux godhood john who has a, a magic ruby gives an enchanted stone to a woman who gave him a ride again another really complex interesting character who sadly just dies <laughs> oh spoilers sorry spoilers uh even lucifer portrayed by a woman seems more kind and agreeable uh, than the man who fostered the little black boy yeah that's the thing like lucifer i mean satan i i guess it's satan is this sort of yeah i mean kind of wishy-washy character portrayed in the show uh it's it's a it's a very interesting take uh there was never any real sense of foreboding stakes i got that feeling too antoine never felt any lead characters are in any danger except in the diner episode which is quite dark and somewhat disturbing the infamous diner episode where again uh, straight people turn gay at the uh, whim of a stone it was it was a really bizarre just straight out weird episode it kind of served no purpose because everything was undone directly after i think it was the clear sort of rock bottom of the season uh 
completely unnecessary and just yeah quite quite disturbing antoine says overall i think i got a they give it a c the storytelling could have been much better if they had simply developed the characters more instead all the minorities uh, were dreadfully boring in their wholesomeness i don't think all of them were but the overwhelming majority definitely suffered from that uh, worse, uh, they never learned anything. Everyone simply acquiesces to their superior wisdom and fixes all obstacles in their path. It's a pretty uh, biting review there from Antoine. I agree with about uh, about with it uh, is it about seventy uh, percent of the way. Um, yeah, look, unless you're a fan of the the source material. And you know you really look. You were really looking forward to seeing those characters portrayed on the screen, especially Death, very iconic character. The race swap stuff. I don't think it was as much of an issue than the um, the sort of over representation of uh, gay people in the show, because it you know it, it came across at least to me as a fairly representative um, portrayal of modern day UK and America. I I do wish. Uh, we'd seen a more accurate representation of death, especially given that like death and dream are the closest of all the brothers and the sisters. And they sort of, they went together as two kind of, uh, you know, goth characters. And yeah, she's very, she's very iconic death being played by a, a sort of really forgettable uh, smiling face. Uh, yeah. I guess it works, but well, it just, it makes the character exactly that forgettable um dream however thankfully i think it's tom sturridge his portrayal of dream i thought was brilliant he really fit the role he looked the part he played the part his voice they gave it some ethereal um you know element to it i thought that was great and while the so the diner episode to me was the low uh that show the episode with that guy the immortal guy where they go through the years was the uh highlight for me i thought that was really interesting and fun and in that episode, interestingly, we got to see a character like Dream actually grow, you know, show some growth as a character. And uh, that was really cool. Unfortunately, again, it was so scattershot. All that seemed to have just disappeared by the next episode. But that's kind of gaming for you. If you're not familiar with how he writes and the sort of stories he likes to tell, it's, uh, you know, he's, he has this sort of me meandering, no rule style uh, of storytelling. Uh, which I think that, I mean, that makes it even more important why you really need to nail the characters and the world building. Uh, but this adaptation for me, it was just, look, it was too scattershot. Uh, it was too scattershot to rise to the heights that I think the graphic novel uh, achieved. So if you are someone who really can't get past the uh, pretty blatant agenda pushing that's going on in this adaptation, it's probably not going to be for you. But if you can just accept, <laughs> you can just go, all right, accept that this is a world, it's an alternative world where, you know, a third of the pop world's population are gay, uh, then I do think there's there's enough going on in the show to make it an enjoyable watch. If it does get renewed, um, I hope, my hope is that it, uh, it gets a bigger budget because, uh, look, people have commented on this that it looks kind of cheap. It was better, I think, at the start of the season, but by the end, it really started to, the special effects especially, really started to resemble cheap uh, Doctor Who uh, episodes. So, yeah, that's kind of uh, where I stand on it. Uh, the Sandman, if you enjoy stories like The Sandman, to delve into dreams and interesting weird things, have I got a comic book for you? It's called Skits, The Origin. Uh, this book, the first one came out a couple of years ago to rave reviews. Uh, everyone who read it really enjoyed it. They've come back with a second book called Skits the Origin. Uh, these are a great uh, couple uh, making, a, you know, creator owned comics, and it's available here. It's uh, it's still crowdfunding. It looks like it will be delivered in November 2022. So they're still actually, you know, making the comic. Uh, but uh, yeah, look, I. I've heard fantastic things about skits and it all, you know, it's all deals into that whole uh, dream world and all that sort of stuff. So if you are a fan of stories like the Sandman, consider coming and uh, checking out skits guys. That's it for me. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the Sandman. Uh, was it too much for you? 
Did you enjoy it? If they make a second season, will you be coming back for more? I'm interested in reading your thoughts. Other than that, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like, uh, subscribe to the channel, consider becoming a member. Those uh, memberships are helping to pay for the creation of new comic books as we speak. All right, that's it from me.